So there have been some great running shoe releases in 2023. Some I've been lucky enough to try and others not quite yet, but there have been three that have really stood out to me so far this year. And today I wanna to share with you guys what those are. So welcome back to another video, and this is gonna be my top three running shoes of 2023 so far. As I said in the intro, I've been very, very lucky to test a fair few shoes this year, but there are a lot that have escaped me so far, some that I'd really love to try. So obviously I have to make this list based on what I've tried, and I have to say these three have really, really impressed me so far this year. And in particular, two of them are right up there for shoe of the year already. So my question really is gonna be, is there anything else that's gonna come in this year that can knock these two Two in particular off the top spot. I guess we'll have to wait and find out. In the meantime, we're gonna dive in and go through these top three shoes of 2023 so far. So if you're excited for today's video, guys, make sure you give it a like, share it with your friends, and of course, please do consider subscribing to the channel for weekly running content. Let's dive in to number one. So let's kickstart things with the Vaporfly version three, a delightful update from version two, if I'm honest. My history, I won't bore you with my history. I'm racing still in the version one. It is my favorite version of all of the Vaporflies, but the version three does give it a good close run for its money. I just felt with version two, the upper was a bit too sloppy, kind of let it down, and the midsole foam, they definitely changed it. It felt a little bit more plasticky, a little bit less bounce, and it wasn't quite as enjoyable for me as version one. I was really, really disappointed, if I'm honest, uh, with that shoe. So to get this one on foot, uh, obviously a big change from version one and two in terms of geometry and the way it runs, but uh, the foam has definitely gone back to that softer feeling that I get in the version one, and that was half the battle. Just I missed that version one kind of soft, propulsive bounce uh, that that shoe gives me and this thing has kind of encapsulated that and brought it back. Yes, it runs slightly different. Yes, it does feel like a different shoe. I have tested this about three or four times now. I've done a couple of training runs in it, I think three training runs in it now, and I've done a race in it. The race didn't go particularly well, but that wasn't the shoe's fault. Uh, it was a very hot, humid, and muggy evening, so slightly disappointing, but I am excited to lace this thing up over the coming months and get some more racing miles in it. I have to say, I think like most shoes these days, in terms of racing shoes, they have kind of played it safe, made it a little bit more stable, have taken the edge away from it. That's why I do still lean towards the version one. Um, I do feel like it's a little bit more streamlined, a little bit sleeker, and I feel like you move a lot faster in it. But I've got to say, this has definitely put itself into second place in the list of the Vaporflies for me, going version one, version three, and version two. I think for me, more than anything, as much as it being a great shoe, it was just a breath of fresh air and like a a sigh of relief that they hadn't kind of continued down the line that they were going with version two. They'd shaken things up a little bit, which they needed to do uh, and produce something that was decent again. So really, really happy with this one and this one makes the top three. And then the Brooks Hyperion Max is another one that definitely gets into the top three so far this year. This is in no particular order, by the way, but this is one of the two shoes uh, that is up there, top spot at the moment for my running shoe of the year 2023. 415 miles in this shoe saw me through a full marathon training block. It caters for every single type of run you can imagine. If you want a shoe to do it all, this is the shoe that you absolutely go for. There is no question in my mind uh, that if I was to have a two shoe rotation at the moment, this year it will be this shoe and the next shoe we're about to talk about. After 415 miles, the only noticeable wear is a minor hole in the heel counter there. Other than that, the midsole has started to go flat. I have retired it, I have stopped using it. Uh, I was getting a few bits and pieces of knee pain in the last two or three runs in it, but for me, 415 miles, what it did for me during marathon training, got myself a big marathon PB, it just got me through a marathon training block, injury free, felt good, and without the use of a carbon plate, which in this day and age is massive because I get a lot of companies want to market shoes with carbon plates, it's the big thing, but we don't need them in every shoe, we just don't need them, and actually I prefer to run without them if I can, and this for me, out there on the market right now is the best shoe uh, that is non-carbon plated for those longer efforts. Now, there's a couple of notable absentees there. The Super Blast from ASICS, yep, haven't tried that one, and that would, love, that would definitely come in and do a similar job, but they don't do my size. They stop at a UK 12. And of course, you're talking about the more super cushioned stuff like the Prime X, uh, that doesn't have a plate in it, and that would definitely cater for some of the longer miles. But again, haven't tried that shoe, so I can't comment. So for me, slightly firmer midsole this one, but absolutely does the job from long runs 
tempo runs, workouts, easy runs, moderate runs, everything you imagine it, this thing can handle it. This one is right up there. And then we've got the Takumi Sen 9 from Adidas. My mind is blown with this shoe at the moment and I genuinely am lost for words with it. And there's a reason why it's not run away with top spot. And we're gonna talk about the comparison between the Hyperion Max and this shortly, but I just need to give this a little bit of air time. So I couldn't test the eight. Um, and I gather the 8 and the 9 are extremely similar and I know the 8 is on sale at the moment for a lot of people have said to me should I get the 8 on sale 9 from what I've been told they're extremely similar shoes absolutely grab the 8 on sale see how you find it this thing is brilliant I got it four or five weeks ago I've got like 80 plus miles in it already and this thing has pretty much taken most of my workouts ever since I have not enjoyed a faster, speedier day shoe like this in a very, very long time. And there is absolutely no other shoe that I want to gravitate towards right now than this one. It is, it's given me, it's the first shoe in a very long time that's really given me that wow factor. The Hyperion Max would just blew me away in terms of how versatile it was, uh, but there's nothing particularly special about it. It's just a really damn good trainer. This thing feels special. It's so lightweight, it's so fast, it's so smooth. Everything about it is absolutely brilliant. And I'm gutted that it just doesn't work for everyone because I've shared some thoughts on it already and a lot of you guys love this shoe but some of you just find it a bit too narrow or it doesn't quite work for you I get it it is a narrower shoe and I have a wider foot I do actually have to squeeze my foot into it uh, it's not uncomfortable in any way shape or form but it does feel like the Vaporfly version one where the vapor weave really hugs the foot this is very very similar but to be honest with you, I just couldn't think of a better shoe right now. Uh, the fact, the, the big pros for me is the fact that it is lightweight. Yes, it's got the carbon, or it's got the rods going through it, so it's not a full carbon plate, but Adidas used the rods, um, and it does have those. But in terms of the cushioning, there is nothing on the market like Light Strike Pro, uh, which this shoe uses. I cannot compare it to anything else. It's got the Vaporfy propulsion responsiveness without the sinking into it and the bouncing away. It's smooth, it's fast, it's snappy. It's everything you want in a speed day shoe. And I genuinely can't recommend this thing highly enough. And let's just give these two a little bit of a head-to-head, -head, a bit of air time and tell you why I feel they share the top spot. Very much got a jack of all trades shoe here, which does absolutely everything and it does everything really flipping well. Uh, in terms of athletics, uh, this is like a heptathlon athlete. Like they can do everything and it's brilliant and they can do it really, really well. This is the master of one and this is by far, um, the best speed day shoe that I have, I genuinely think, ever owned for those speed days, for those workouts, for those intervals. So I love the Streak Fly. You guys know that. I've had two pairs now and I love, love, love them. They're brilliant, but these are better and I can't think of anything that's come close to them. If I'm honest, uh, these are in a world of their own. They're in a stratosphere. It's just... They're incredible. I get excited to run in these things and I love slipping them on and I love how they feel. And I wish, I just wish everyone could enjoy them because I know some people can't. Um, but for this one, I just feel like if you needed one shoe, this is all you need. And for me, if you could have a two shoe rotation in 2023, these are the two shoes because you could race in this and you can train in this. You could do your speed days and races in this and your longer distance races in this and train in it. They're both such great options, both non-plated really. I mean, yeah, I know this has rods in it, but I don't find them the same as running with a plate. And I do feel like I run more naturally in this shoe than I do with a plated shoe, which is great. So I kind of feel like both of these shoes deserve to be up there for very different reasons, but I just can't split them. The Running Shoe Awards are right now, they would both get a joint award. So uh, yeah, absolutely, jack of all trades, and it does it very, very well. Master of one, and it blows everything else out of the water. So there we go. Those are my top three running shoes of 2023 so far. As you probably gathered, I can't talk highly enough, especially about those last two shoes enough. The Vaporfly version three is a brilliant update. I'm really delighted with it. And it is a standout this year. But again, those two, Takumi Sen 9, Brooks Hyperion Max, they sit in a level on their own. Those are just my thoughts though. I'd love to hear what you guys think. If you've been lucky enough to test any 2023 running shoe releases, I'd love to uh, hear from you guys down in the comments below what your favorites have been so far this year and what you use them for. Because for me, 
Those two shoes in particular have a very clear purpose. And as I said, I could just have a two shoe rotation, a fresh pair of each of them, and they would see me through and I'd be happy. I wouldn't need anything else and I would be delighted. Love to hear what your thoughts are on that. And as I said, if you've tried any of this year, do let me know down in the comments below what yours are and share those thoughts with everyone else. That's it from me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do consider giving it a like, share it with your friends, and of course, do consider subscribing to the channel for weekly running content. I'll see you on the next one. Until then.